This is Duke University. I'm Eddie Molesky, and I'm an associate professor of political economy here in the political science department at Duke University. The first stream of research is classical political economy research, where I'm interested in firms and businesses, and I'm interested in how those firms interact with the policy making process. And then I'm also interested in the reverse. The second stream of research is I happen to work in a lot of countries that are classified as non-democratic, but those countries get things done in interesting ways. So how do authoritarian countries work? The third stream of my research is on governance. And so the so this is a little bit related, but these are questions about transparency and corruption and participation. Awesome. <laughs> I'm the best professor ever. No, um, I try to bring a lot of sort of energy and excitement about what I teach, and I, I think that's, that's earnest. I legitimately feel that I'm doing really fun things, and I want the students to know about that. But my goal is really that students leave the classroom with some real skill sets that they can apply in the world, and I think acquiring those skill sets is always challenging. It's not easy. Because I work on these questions of governance, and that's led me to work a lot in the world of international development. So I've worked with organizations like the World Bank and USAID, and so I try and bring those experiences back. So what is it really like to run a business in an emerging market? And what are the real governance constraints that they face? And so how should we think about that? A lot of my research is done in Vietnam, but tries to answer larger questions about political economy, about authoritarian regimes, and Vietnam has just been the place where I've been able to do that type of research. But that brought me into you know, contact with some other places. I've done projects in Thailand, in Cambodia, in Indonesia, and when I've even branched out of Southeast Asia, I've had the chance to go to Kosovo, El Salvador, Bangladesh, so I've had some opportunities to travel to a lot of places. A lot of the discussion about China, it falls into camps about, you know, why is China growing so fast? Or people sort of look at the authoritarian side of China, and they discuss the human rights violations, and they discuss really the non-democratic elements, but what, what has been missed a lot in this discussion is that there's a whole bunch of small things that have taken place in China, small governance reforms that the Chinese government themselves have been experimenting with. And they're really not about China becoming more democratic. They're about China, within its own system, trying to find ways to govern better so that, it, you know, so that this regime can stay in power. I don't think global necessarily means to travel all the world and be sort of the barefoot traveler, but I, I do think what, for me, global has meant is learning about other places and then taking that back into my experience and research in the United States. So, you know, spending time with Vietnamese scholars, spending time with Chinese scholars, and sort of making that part of the way I view the world. Global for me is about the expanded perspective you get when you have a deeper understanding of another place and another culture.